Hello everyone and welcome to Flickering Myth TV, an extension of the website flickeringmyth.com. My name is EJ Marino and today we are diving into a brand new review of an animated film, Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. During this time where everyone's stuck inside, I was really looking forward to Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. I'm just going to call it Scorpion's Revenge from here on out because that is a long title. So yeah, I was really excited for Scorpion's Revenge because this is my kind of thing animated, gory, and based in Mortal Kombat, which I am a big fan of, this is something I was looking forward to. I had high hopes. I maybe should have lowered those hopes because I was a little let down with this film. It is not bad by any means, but, ooh, okay, here's where I, I, I called it a film. This feels like the first episode of an animated TV show that would have been a big hit. But as an individual movie, as a solo film, there's way too many cliffhangers at the end. The drama, it gets a little scattered. We you know our main character, who's supposed to be, or at least our main character, Scorpion, gets thrown to like the B story about halfway through once we meet all the other characters. And that's where I'm, I'm feeling this should have been a TV show so we could uh, spread this out, enjoy this. The stuff at the beginning when we see Scorpion's backstory, his origin, is so good. And we lose that along the way. And that's what really upsets me is with a little bit more time, with spreading this story out or focusing more on Scorpion and not trying to do the tournament as well, in this one film, it could have been great, but what's presented is far from a flawless victory. Scorpion's revenge starts with Scorpion, well, getting revenge. If anyone knows the backstory of this character, it is tragic and insane. And that's about all you know in this movie because they don't really dive deeper. I wanted to know how Scorpion gets used to his powers. Give me more of those moments. Like I said, I really wish this was all just about Scorpion, but about, um, I would say after the first act, we go straight into the tournament where we are getting so many characters and so much fan service. Like, I love Quan Chi. I didn't need to see Quan Chi in this movie. You could have saved him for a sequel or if this was a TV show like season two. But yeah, I, I really don't understand what this middle section is because it's the same Mortal Kombat tournament we have seen so many times. Fans of this series want something different. I would have loved to see the face of this brand, which is Scorpion. I know I love Liu Kang. I love all of them, but it's Scorpion. He is, him and Sub-Zero are like the heart and soul of this. I would have loved loved a film with just those two fighting it. Awesome. We could have the tournament in the background, let them dip in, fight Liu Kang for a cool little fight scene, and go right back to their story. But here, once we get to all the tournament stuff, it gets a little cluttered. It gets a little bit messy, though I really like the fights. The fight scenes in the actual tournament are so good. The fight scenes throughout this whole like animated uh, film are really really good i really love the fight so i'm not gonna like diss that i'm not gonna say that this wasn't gory they promised r rating and this was a good r i like all of that but i would have just preferred a more streamlined individual story of scorpion without trying to do the mortal kombat story a little bit of sub-zero a little bit of Liu kang the sonya blade johnny cage romance all of that at one time i didn't need Nailing the perfect casting for Mortal Kombat characters is no easy task. I mean, the video games try to use Ronda Rousey for Sonya Blade, and that did not work. So this is something I was looking forward to seeing here. How was the voice acting going to go? Overall, I actually really like the voice cast. There's one who stands out that I don't enjoy. I really don't like Joel McHale as Johnny Cage. I felt like it got too comedic, and I know they wanted something a little bit light and a little bit more playful in there, but the stuff with him and Sonya is cringeworthy. It is so dated, so bad, and I, I don't, I'm not going to completely blame that on Joel McHale's voice acting, but something about his delivery just really brought home that, like, dated 90s vibe of this action hero trying to hit on her. Oh god, I hated it. It was truly cringe. They have really good moments together, and I kind of, I understand where their relationship's going to be built from, and I, like, again, you're a Mortal Kombat fan, you get the, oh, he annoys her to charm her to death. Oh, uh -huh, cute. It's not cool here. Again, when the beginning is so crazy with Hanzo and his kid and just trying to do it and becoming a fire demon, I'm like, great, awesome, this is serious. Oh, we're getting to Johnny Cage comedy. Okay, and that's just a Johnny Cage problem I have in general. So this is kind of more my personal opinion on that. But again, this is where I'm saying where the voice acting is good, the fights are good. It's just something about this story. There's so much happening at one time. Scale this back give me something or make this a tv show and i would have loved this netflix could have ate this up why did netflix not turn this into a series because it could have helped it immensely 
I have mentioned the cliffhangers at the end, and that's kind of my biggest problem. I know you want people to buy that second movie, or in the cases where this should have been, again, I keep thinking this should have been a TV show. This would have been great to watch like the next couple episodes, but here, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to be like, oh my god, I cannot wait to watch the next Mortal Kombat Legends movie, whatever they're going to do, like Liu Kang's story, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do for the next one of these, but I don't know if they've grabbed me in here. I had a fun, enjoyable experience going to see all these cool characters at the end when all this battle's happening. All of that is interesting, and they do grip me. But I don't know. They got me for that movie. That's what I'm trying to say. They got me for this one individual viewing. None of the cliffhangers really made me go, oh my god, the next movie's going to be great. That didn't happen here. So that's why it's just kind of ending on a cliffhanger and then the cliffhanger's not working. That makes me as a viewer not like it as much. And I think we've all experienced that where something leaves you off and you're like, ooh, the, the filmmakers are like, they're going to be hyped. And you're kind of like, I'm fine, and that's kind of what happens here. I, I'm fine. If there's a next movie in this series, I'll check it out, but I'm not going to rush to it like I did with this one. All right, everyone, that is it for my review of Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. What a long title for a fairly okay movie. I, I'm excited to talk about something new. I'm excited to be back here doing movie reviews for Flickering Myth during all of this insanity. I just wish I came back with a, a stronger movie for you guys, a, a more fun recommendation but if you're a Mortal Kombat fan if you're looking for something fun animated and crazy to watch this won't be bad for you at all thank you guys so much for tuning into my review make sure you guys subscribe to Flickering Myth because we make videos like this every single week give me a thumbs up because YouTube takes those way too seriously hey and if you did enjoy it we love a thumbs up and make sure you guys comment down below I want to know your feelings on Mortal Kombat this movie and if you would watch more Mortal Kombat animated films. All right, everyone, let's talk about that down below.